I had been the Guardian for 25 years. I was the investigations editor. We were doing really big stories, WikiLeaks, Iraq. I came across FGM and I thought, why if we're doing stories about people having their emails hacked, why aren't we covering the fact that 200 million girls and women are having their genitals hacked off? So we set up the global media campaign and our first backer was the UN Secretary General himself who launched us in Nairobi. Four years later, a small group of us left The Guardian and set up a charity dedicated to ending FGM, determined to do things differently. There's a huge anger in the activist community fighting FGM because the millions, and there is millions that is being spent on FGM, is not reaching them. What we do with the global media campaign is reverse that. And a large proportion of our funds go to the grassroots. That's what makes us different. We searched for activists who were working on FGM, who were often survivors, who were already working in the field, and through the volunteers we could see the people who really had the passion. It's the activists on the ground who are going to go to their religious leaders and say, this is the reality of FGM, and tell people to stop, because they'll listen to you. We invite activists, religious leaders and journalists to a five-day media training academy. We start the academy with the doctor explaining exactly what FGM is and what it can do to the body of a girl. This is what you see. This is the first time that many journalists and religious leaders actually see what FGM is and it's this information they bring back to their communities. It changed my perception and I'm not going to let my daughter undergo FGM. The media can be revolutionary and the moment it's here, it's now. Activism is aided by tools to drive your story home. So what we're doing with media is we're saying let's use the smartphones, let's use the WhatsApps, let's use the Google documents and create a new faster way of getting action and we are getting results. <laughs> In a campaign uh, for 10 years now, TV, radio, I didn't know how to use them. I used to knock doors talking to people and my work was never recognized. But now I can say I'm very confident. I've amplified my work through social media, Twitter, WhatsApp, Facebook. Many people are getting the message clearly. Using the media to end FGM really 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 very important i must say it's been a revolutionary journey of discovery for me as so far i have appeared in more than 10 tv stations and radio stations in nigeria reaching 150 million people i've seen a lot of changes in my community since i've begun engaging the religious leaders muslim leaders have delinked the islamic religion from female genital mutilation saying the act is sinful the circumcision of women is not allowed in islam a week doesn't go without an MGM story being aired. It has made a big difference. L'excision is perceived by the initiators of this forum as a problem of health and of violation of the human rights of the woman and the child. For the first time, FGM was on the news, on primetime news in Mali. The biggest satisfaction that I have received from the forum has been the declaration of the minimum on the first chain that is a huge breakthrough and that would not have happened without GMC and PLAN working together. In PLAN we work with the local communities to eradicate FGM, but it takes time. The approach of global media campaign is very focused, working with the media and communicating through the media. And that combination of plan and global media campaign is a unique match that can lead to lasting impact. 
this is a revolutionary moment. This is a whole new era of women who can use social media, women who can set up communities and organise themselves. The Global Media Campaign is about supporting them. They are the ones who are going to end this, not us.